moved to the US from England when I was 29 and opened my first health food store in Florida and had 1.4 stores and now I own two stores but I retired to North Carolina about three years ago so I now live in the beautiful North Carolina mountains just south of Asheville which is seriously my happy place. I love to, I'm a triathlete, I love to run, bike and swim and I'm now riding horses and it's just a great place to be. And one of the reasons I'm so proud to represent Europharma as an educator is that I use these products myself and have done for, as they've come on the market, for at least 10 years. And I'm here to tell you that I'm 58. I do get a lot done in my life. I have no pain. I feel fabulous. And it's because of some of these products I really feel like have boosted my health and protected my health. And so I want to talk tonight about some of these herbal materials that we, we know of now that really work well and sometimes better than the companion medications that your doctor is going to be prescribing when you could be using some of these herbals that have efficacy and then also have side benefits for your body, not side effects. You know, while we're taking something for our heart, gosh, it helps our liver. While we're taking something for our brain, it's great for our hip joints. So that's my message tonight is herbals are great because they, we've evolved around them. We, we live in the same carbon bubble as them and they really will support our health if we know what to buy and if we know what the science behind them is. So that's kind of my mission tonight. And you're probably all here and you probably support Dave's store and thank you for shopping local. I'm a retailer. It's, it's kind of hard out there these days with Amazon and Target and Earth Fair and Sprouts and all these big stores and to be a community-based retailer is not easy. You have to be constantly rethinking yourself. So thank you for your support for the small independence and, and keep going with that because think what life would be like if you didn't have Dave and his great staff to ask for support and cry on his shoulder from time to time, which I know you probably have all done. So you're here though because you're searching for solutions and you're searching for health solutions and a better way to live a high quality of life, like you want to live your best life. And it doesn't matter if you're 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 80, we can't help aging, we should bring it on and then thrive within that age group. Um, but what does health mean to you? Some people just think it's not having a disease. You know, I'm healthy because I don't have flu today and I'm healthy because I don't have heart failure. But to me, being healthy is sleeping great, being in a good mood, having tons of energy, enjoying my family, enjoying my friends, having a good attitude and being resilient to stress and anxiety and resilient to disease. That to me is being healthy. It's not just that I'm not sick, right? And I do believe there's people out there who've never known that feeling. They just don't know what it's like to feel well. And I'm not, I don't know your personal histories, but you probably have people in your family who take multiple medications and they just never feel great. So I feel like we have some solutions in our herbal armor. Um, there's a, a very famous uh, geneticist called Dr. Goal, RJ Goal, and he works out of Baylor University and you're a farmer have partnered with him. Um, he's very proactive about doing studies because he's from India himself and he grew up with the value of herbal medicines. And he's been doing a lot of cutting edge research on cancer in particular and what genetics of cancer are and how plants can help with that and how medi medicines can help with that. And I went to a lecture a few years ago and I was so excited to learn all about the cancer, the way we're gonna heal cancer, that's why I was there. And he came to the edge of the stage and he said, I want to tell you all, there is no cure for cancer. There never will be a cure for cancer. And I was like, well, are we here to hear about the research you're doing and the, 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 the education that you're gonna give us about cancer? And he said, it takes cancer 20 years to develop before it shows itself. The best thing you can do for yourselves and for my customers at that time is when they are healthy, start to prevent. Now for some people you may have sickness now and those herbals will certainly make a difference but for those of you like me who have enjoying good health at this moment in my life, who knows what will happen tomorrow, 
to be sure I'm putting those herbals in my body because I've seen the signs and I know if I combine some of these herbs that affect all my body systems, I am going to keep healthy as I age and I'm going to live my best life as I age um, no matter how long I live. And some people live dying, I want to die living, right? It's a cliche, but that's really what I feel. feel. So what can we use as natural adjunct therapies? Um, well, we can use herbal med medicinals and plants have superpowers. They can prevent de disease and also speed healing if we're sick. So this is going to be a, a short journey with six plants that have proven that their superpowers are as healers and as wellness superheroes. And my message to you is that all of you tonight, with the information I'm going to share with you and the science I'm going to share with you, can build your house of wellness if you start using these herbs tomorrow or tonight, which I will be doing when I get back to my hotel room. I make sure I pack them and I take them before I go to bed. So we have lots of traditional stor stories about herbals. Does anybody watch Outlander? Does anybody like that show? Yeah, I know, right? Isn't it great? <laughs> So the female character in Outlander is an herbalist and it's based in the 18th century part of the story. It's a great show, by the way. Um, it's addictive. And she's an herbalist and she's using herbals. And we have stories, we call them old wives' tales. I hate that. Um, but they are knowledge that we had and knowledge that we've passed down through our generations about these plants, which were our medicines. We've forgotten about them and we've been shunted onto this journey of powerful medications that create lots of side effects. But there are great news. Uh, we have herbs that have no side effects, side benefits. They are holistic and they're safe. And now we have results with clinical testing that we can prove they're better or equal to drugs without the side effects. So let's get going. This is the first time I've done this, so hang with me here, people. All right, curcumin. I bet there's no one in this room who hasn't heard of turmeric, right? And there's a lot of confusion. We call it curfusion around curcumin, <laughs> right? So turmeric is the root there. You see it. It's a yellow root. You probably see it in your health food stores. You've probably certainly cooked with the dried powdered version of turmeric when you make a dal or a curry. And of course, it's a staple in the Indian diet. And Indian people have much less health problems than we have, partly because they incorporate this into their daily uh, diet. The medicinal part of turmeric is called curcumin. So turmeric is the plant or the food. Curcumin is the medicine that's found in the turmeric plant, right? The problem is that there's only a certain amount of curcumin within turmeric. It's a very small percentage. We're going to talk about what to look out for when you buy a, a curcumin product to make sure you're getting the dose that you really need. Don't have faith in something and ten, 10 years later find out you've been taking the wrong product and it hasn't helped you. Um, so curcumin is, what is it good for? Well, it's an antioxidant, it's an anti-inflammatory, it's an antiviral, it's a good time of year to be putting it in your body, it's uh, antibacterial, it's anti-cancer proven with scientific studies, which we'll discuss, it restores immune system, it increases glutathione levels. Is, is everybody familiar with glutathione? It's your master antioxidant. You produce glutathione to keep you healthy. And there's many, many things that we do in our lives that reduce the amount of glutathione we produce. But glutathione is, protects your DNA. It's, it's the, the secret to health. And curcumin also protects the liver. It is the all-in-one solution and is effective for any health problem you can imagine. It really is a nature's heavy lifter for all ailments. As my grandmother used to say, anything that ails you. So what are the studies? Well, we, look, we know we have studies for multiple cir cirrhosis, psoriasis, colitis, metabolic syndrome. That's the people who have, you know, they have um, uh, chronic fatigue and they gain weight easy and they, they just never feel good. They're tired. Um, and by the way, animals get that too. Uh, gum disease, gingivitis, cancer, pain, arthritis, diabetes, liver disease, asthma and allergies, Alzheimer's, dementia, and depression. So it's pretty much everything you can think of on the scale of illness we can address with curcumin. So we did a study, or there was a study done, on arthritis of the knee. So we're trying to prove that herbs work better than drugs. And this was a study done um, with curcumin against dive 
clofenic sodium. Does anybody know what drug that is? That's a drug called Vol Voltaren, and it's a prescription drug for 5 lox inflammation, which is what uh, joint inflammation is, or pain in the joints is. Um, and so we can see that uh, the group, so we had, um, the studies showed that curcumin was equally effective at improving pain control, pain control with the groups at day 28, but it was better tolerated than the drug. There were multiple adverse effects in the group that took the Voltaire, and so much so that um, many of them, 28% of them, had to quit the, the study because they had such destructive gastrointestinal um, results. They had to start taking acid blockers and so on, had diarrhea, a lot of them had gut pain. And the group who took the curcumin had no problems at all, but got the same results. So we know that curcumin studied in the study compared with the drug cured pain as well as the drug, but with very fewer, much fewer side effects. So those people could be consistent with their dosing. Um, we looked at, uh, this is a graph that showed the number of people and the adverse effects they suffered during that study. So uh, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, abdominal pain, gas, and also upper respiratory tract infection. So sometimes these drugs actually affect the immune system so much so that you start to actually get sick. Um, so the group who took the curcumin had zero problems. So the, the curcumin worked better than a, a very popular prescription medication for pain with joints. Um, we took another study, which is 45 people with rheumatoid arthritis. Now, osteoarthritis is what most people suffer from. One in 10 adults will get osteoarthritis. It's that wear and tear kind of arthritis when you, know, you can no longer run on the treadmill or you have a hard time getting out of the car or up and off the toilet. Um, and that's joint pain caused by wear and tear. And um, rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disorder and it's created by people through their diet becoming uh, susceptible to proteins because they have leaky gut. And the body produces T cells because of the leaky gut that goes and tells the body to digest its own collagen, <laughs> which is really not helpful. And young people can get rheumatoid arthritis too, and it is a disease of the gut, and we can go about healing the gut. But uh, the curcumin did something really uh, as effective in doing that. It actually switched off the... Um, receptors that told the T cells to go to the collagen. So it actually stopped the process from happening. So it was really effective, but it also relieved the pain. So we have a group that took the curcumin, one that took the curcumin with the drug, and then one that just took the, the uh, drug, the Voltaren. Um, and it was as effective as you can see from the, the drug of relieving arthritis pain. But again, 14% of the people had to leave the study because of side effects created by the drug. And that's um, over an eight-week period. If you're taking this drug for a prolonged period of time, and obviously you're going to be on it forever, basically, because <laughs> it's doing nothing to improve the situation, um, you are going to get layers and layers of multiple side effects. So in my mind, it's just better to take the curcumin, which works as well. Another study we had with, against depression, which was really interesting. Uh, this is the international depression score where people are talk about what they feel and how their symptoms are. Um, there was a result in, in symptoms after eight weeks using 500 milligrams of curcumin bound with AR tumorone. So AR tumorone is, is fascinating. It's an essential oil found in the turmeric plant. So when we talk about lavender oil, we all know that comes from the flower, but it's an oil. And we have the same essential oil profile in the turmeric plant. So when we combine the AR tumorone, and by the way, it's not part of our presentation, but they're having really good success with AR tumorone and cancer cells, that research is ongoing. Um, but if we combine the 500 milligrams of curcumin with AR tumorone, we have created this form of curcumin called BCM95, which is the most studied, the most absorbable form of curcumin on the market. And that is the curcumin that all these studies were, were done with. It was the raw material. So this was a study done with two a day of the 500 milligrams curcumin with the turmeric essential oil. And we can see that the group that took the curcumin, um, and you all know what a double blind trial is, right? That you don't know which you're getting. So 
you're not affected by the psychology of it, um, is that the curcumin had sustained results and further continuing results after week eight. Um, so we also have key results in research studies for diabetes, depression, and Prozac, 60 people over six weeks with major depressive disorder. The curcumin stimulated the neurogenesis and allowed new healthy brain cells to be created, uh, which helped with depression. And also in breast cancer, we could reduce cell proliferation by up to 70% using the curcumin with, combined with AR tumorone. Prostate cancer, in the study, prostate tumor size was reduced by up to 65% using this particular material, this particular form of curcumin. Um, so how do you use curcumin? Well, as we talked about, it absorbs well when it's paired with fat. And those of you who like to cook and maybe cook Indian food know that in India, when they cook with turmeric, the first thing they put in the pan is ghee, right? Which is a, a clarified butter and it's a saturated fat and then they mix the spices in with the ghee, mainly turmeric initially, and that turmeric then gets, you can see it in the pan, it gets dispersed into the fat. Well, when we combine it with the AR tumorum, the fat that's found in the turmeric, we have this perfect combination for absorption. Um, so these studies, and for your overall health, you want to make sure you take 750 milligrams of curcumin a day, which gives you uh, 500 milligrams of guaranteed curcumin bound to AR tumorone and do that once or twice a day. Now, we get asked a lot of questions about this. How do I know? My doctor doesn't recommend it, so how do I know the dose? Well, A, this is completely safe. We've tested it uh, up to 12,000 milligrams a day. There are no adverse effects when combined with other medications. It is not a blood thinner. It does not affect your blood pressure in a negative way when combined with drugs. There's no fear of side effects. Remember, only side benefits. Um, so dosing-wise, someone like me who's healthy, I take the 750, giving me 500 milligrams of curcumin every night. If someone came to me in my store and they maybe had chronic issues, I would definitely dose up. Uh, we have a doctor who's a practitioner who utilizes some of these great products. And he told me that he likes to, um, what he said was, when you have a fire in your house, you don't get the spritzer bottle out, right? And spritz the house. You get out the fire hose and put the flames out. So sometimes when you have a lot of pain and inflammation, you want to go high to start with, get it in the system, and then maybe reduce when you start feeling the, the huge benefits that you feel. It is the BCM95 form of curcumin, is, that's how it is delivered into the system. It is much more absorbable, it's studied up to 10 times more absorbable into the cell. So you, you ingest it, do you take it? It's, yes, it's, it, it's a form of curcumin that is used in all of the products that Dave has at his store. Um, so that might be a combination for pain with Boswell, or it might just be the straight curcumin which is what I like to take, because I take the Boswellia separately too. Um, but yes, it's already bound in the material um, that, that you take. So the oils are already in with it. Right, and the reason that the oils are in there is because then it becomes 100% absorbed in the cell, which is where you want it, right? You want it in the cell uh, for many reasons. Um, it's a bio beware situation. You do want that 750 milligram plus dose. Um, beware other companies and other curcumins on the market. You may go grab one off the shelf and read it for yourself. Uh, use synthetic absor um, absorption agents. They don't use the AR tumor, so they use polysorbate 80. I don't want to put that in my body. I'm not sure how you feel about it. And then a lot of people think about black pepper. There's no science behind black pepper as an absorb absorption agent for curcumin. We have science that proves that curcumin with AR tumorone is delivered into the cell 10 times better than any other curcumin on the market. Uh, also, one of the concerns with black pepper is not only is it an irritant, but also it is a vasodilator. So if you're taking um, you know, a, a benzodiazepine type drug, or if you're taking a blood thinner, or something that's very important that you get the measured dose from it, all of that is going to access the system in one go. And I always think about somebody who's maybe having a, going to have a stressful day, they pop a couple of Xanaxes, 
maybe they're on a blood pressure medication and then they take something with black pepper thinking it's going to do them good and they get in their car. I worry about that because that, all that medication is going to get into the system. You know, we all know we don't take grapefruit with heart medications, right? There's a reason for that. Think about black pepper the same way. Um, so that's curcumin. It's a fantastic superpower to put in your body every day. It's a nature's lifter. I know Dave has in his story and also in your pack some more information with some of the studies that were done about the BCM95, which is the curcumin that you should, you should buy. Um, a wise person once said, people come in the store, they don't want the second best thing. They want the first best thing. And another wise person said, the most expensive supplement you can buy is the one that doesn't work. So think about that. Okay, grapeseed. This is one of my favorites. All these superheroes have superpowers, and grapeseed's superpower is its potential to protect your cells, its antioxidant potential. It is very powerful for cell protection. Does, Dave, do you ever do a cell analysis, live blood cell analysis in the store? I have, we did years ago. We okay. Have, nobody does it around local, so. So somebody will come in and they withdraw blood and a little drop of blood, they put it on a slide and they put a high-powered microscope and you can see what your cells look like. It's a really exciting thing to see. It just blows people's minds that, wow, all that's going on in one drop of blood? It makes you think about what you eat for sure. But you can see people who have damaged cells because their cells have, they're like uneven. A nice healthy cell is completely round like a, like a small yoga ball. Um, so grapeseed is really good at keeping that cell whole and protected. And that's this, the key to not being sick and not aging. So grapeseed um, strengthens the immune system. It's really great to help the liver in processing toxins and spent hormones and the hormones that come in that you don't want, those xenoestrogens that play havoc with our endocrine system. People start getting weight gain and, and terrible uh, symptoms and um, you know they get fibrocystic breasts and uterus. That's all created by the xenoestrogens and cleaning products and the environment that the liver just gets overwhelmed with and, and cannot let go of. So the liver has a pathway that is supposed to push hormones out so that you always are having a healthy balance. And um, grapeseed's great for opening up that pathway out of the liver to make sure, you know, it's, we can't control the air we breathe, right, most of the time. So at least do something proactive to keep your liver healthy and keep your hormones in balance. And I'm not just talking about women, it's the same for men too, of course. Um, it's an anti-inflammatory, an antiviral, an antibacterial, and it's also anti-cancer. Um, but Grace City is all about the OPCs, and there will be a test on this later. You cannot leave the church if you cannot say oligomeric proanthocyanidin. So look hard and long, people. <laughs> um, proanthocyanidins and the oligomeric proanthocyanidins are the most desirable elements found in the grapeseed. And yes, the grapeseed is the byproduct of the winemaking industry. Um, we love our wine, our healthy wine, and the grape seeds are then used because they have these little magical medicinal compounds called OPCs. But they also have large tannins in them. We, we, we really don't want these. And I knew this would show up when I saw the... the so my friend who works at Europharma, she likens the OPCs and the tannins. The OPCs are chihuahuas, and the tannins are Great Danes, or I'm not a dog person. What kind of dog is that? A, a bulldog of some kind? Okay. So if you, if you think of your um, cells like the doggy door in your house and you own a chihuahua, you only want the chihuahua coming in through your doggy door. You don't want the neighbor's Great Dane, right? Uh, so uh, I didn't make this up. So OPCs are very absorbable. So the evidence for its anti-cancer effects now are overwhelming and so exciting to me. Um, it is a powerful antioxidant cell protection, and here's some research that was done in the lab for tumor size and tumor reduction using OPC. So OPCs, which is what you're looking for, not just grapeseed, you're looking for something that says OPC on the label, are more effective than standard grapeseed containing the large bulldog tannins at preventing tumor formation. And this was a study done um, on uh, they gave rats colon cancers, 
Well, what happened initially, they gave rats a whole host of cancers. Every single cancer they could think of, they gave them to these poor rats. And then they treated them with the grape seed extract OPC. And they found at day two, in every single situation of those cancers, the tumors were shrinking. So the researchers at, at Baylor University, these smart geneticists said, what, what is going on in OPCs that do that to tumors? So they then did another study and they actually um, put uh, colon cancer cells in a Petri dish, which is a phase two trial, FDA approved, just like they would do with medications. And they injected the tumors with the OPC material. And so they used, at the top you see the cheap, the large tannin grapeseed extracts. And then the second were the high OPC, small OPCs at 50 and 100 milligrams. After day 13, using 50 milligrams, 40%, the tumor had shrunk by 40%. That's less than two weeks. And with 100 milligrams, the tumor had shrunk by 65%. I take 400 milligrams a day. I'm pretty confident I'm helping my body not create tumors. And if I have some, they're going away. <laughs> Based on this research, uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty staggering. And I have not seen as Dr. RJ says, there is no cure for cancer. I have not seen any research that is done with one drug that does the same thing across the board. And he said, the reason there's no cure for cancer is, um, what's your name, sir? Ian. Ian, okay. So Ian and I get lung cancer, the same kind of cancer, right? But how Ian's cancer looks is really different from my cancer because I have a different DNA from Ian. We might live in a different part of the country, exposed to different chemicals. He might be a meat eater, I'm a vegetarian. All of that affects our DNA, and all of that affects the way that cancer is gonna look when it gets in our bodies and how we can possibly treat it. So there's no single pathway for cancer. He likens it to, if you look at, if all the airplanes that are flying around in the world right now and you did a path for them, that's what cancer looks like. How do we choose the path? Sometimes we're lucky and we hit it right, but we never get to the stem cell, and I'll talk about that in a minute too. So something that can address all those cancers and make in the lab meaningful reduction in tumor size is very exciting and really something that we're going to be pursuing because that might be an answer, right? And this is a plant medicine. Stunning. So also, um, grapeseed extract is really useful not only if you want to protect yourself against cancer, but arthritis. The number one killer in this country is, of course, heart disease. Uh, my mother herself died of congestive heart failure, and I don't want to go on that journey. Uh, diseases of the veins or the circulatory system, like varicose veins or venous insufficiency, which is always what a varicose vein is, and although it shows itself in the leg, pay attention because that's happening throughout your body. Um, diabetes and its complications, because that's a disease of circulation and starvation. Diabetic retinopathy, likewise. Kidney failure, likewise. Vision problems, including macular degeneration, because the eyes are very vascular and need a lot of blood supply. So grapeseed's great at that. Cancer, of course, we discussed that. And then Alzheimer's um, and other dementias. And actually how that works is it helps suppress the plaques and tangles that are the characteristic formation of uh, the onset of Alzheimer's, which we're all terrified of, right? So when we get back to the uh, cancer cell, um, we combined OPCs, I didn't do this, I keep saying we, it's not me. <laughs> the researchers combined OPCs with chemo in treatment resistant colon cancer. So these are colon cancers that are not responding to chemotherapy. And the results combined with the OPC, the chemo then, together with the OPC, where it had not worked before, resulted in a 70% reduction in tumor weight. So we can actually use it alongside and, and as an adjunct for chemotherapy. And curcumin also sensitizes cancer cells to chemo, so we can go in and use maybe 50% of the, the chemotherapy with better outcomes and much less of the side effects with the patients. Um, OPCs led to a 71% reduction in cancer cell, cell, stem cell formation, which is the little seed that's left behind when we destroy a cancer cell with chemo. And you may have recovered from cancer but that stem cell is in there, chances are that's going to reoccur in five to seven years, and now it will be resistant to the chemo that originally killed the cancer. So that's a problem. 
also studies in the curcumin um, brochure that talk about uh, stem cell reduction with using curcumin. So now we're kind of building a house of wellness, right? This is what I'm talking about. These are products you can combine that systematically will start to support your wellness and protect you against some of these diseases that we are in fear of, but really are lifestyle choices. And uh, we can do something with some of these great um, herbs. So you've got to be careful which to buy. This slide just talks about that uh, they were studied. Other brands were studied. Some of them had no OPCs in at all. Some didn't even have any grapeseed extract in them. They were made with peanut skins. Um, so these were actually tested in the lab to see what they were combined with. So 50% of the products taken off a health food store shelf were adulterated or were below potency needed for treatment. So make sure you, you're using a trusted brand that has the OPCs, it should be right on the front of the box, out and proud, yes? If you're already taking grapeseed and you feel like dementia is coming on, should you upgrade, take more? I'm not a doctor, but I know how I would consider that for myself. Um, I would be taking um, three things. I would be taking a Boswellia, that is a super potency. I would take the highest potency of the OPC grapeseed extract I could, and I would also be taking a high potency of curcumin. Those three things together are totally supportive of normal brain function and reducing inflammation in the brain that starts to create that congestion. Then we get the plaques and tangles and then we have a problem. The brain is no longer plastic, as we call it. We're not producing new brain cells. And we have clinical data to show that curcumin in and of itself alone produces neurogenesis, which is the onset of production of new brain cells, which is what we want to keep the brain healthy. But I'm not a doctor. I didn't advise you to do that. Um, so, and also when we looked at curcumin combined with OPCs uh, from grapeseed extract, we had even better uh, cancer um, results. Also, when we talked about grapeseed extract with the OPCs for the liver, a study showed that there was a 50% increase in liver antioxidant levels when given the grapeseed extract. So, again, anybody who's concerned about their liver, it's a really, really important organ and it does a great job for us and let's just keep it healthy. Um, we want to be doing some grapeseed extract. Um, and then also those of you who are interested for your heart, it's magnificent for reducing blood pressure, supporting healthy blood vessels, um, helping with AFib, um, any kind of heart issue. I so wish we'd had it when my mom was alive because I would have been around her house giving her massive doses of it. So it's very beneficial for health and protecting against disease. Um, and we know it works at the level of the cells. And um, so take it for all the health concerns that I've mentioned. Um, and remember to choose one that has the, the low molecular weight OPC, not the high tannins. And then 150 to 600 milligrams a day. Uh, I take a 400 milligram product uh, from Europharma every day. That's what I like to use in my body. And I feel like it's a, I take it at bedtime because I believe the liver likes to do stuff while I'm sleeping to make me feel super healthy. Um, okay, so one of my favorite um, herbs that has superpowers is Boswellia serrata. And many of you probably use Boswellia serrata and don't know it if you use frankincense oil, because that's what frankincense oil is from. It's from the tree, Boswellia serrata, that grows in Arabia, North Africa, and it secretes a gum, like little pearls, calls it tear tears of India, I love that. And the medicine is a resin derived from, they scrape the tree bark and they either turn it into an essential oil or they make it a supplement, which is the Boswellia serrata. So um, Boswellia's superpower is five locks inflammation. So everybody knows that nowadays we don't die of infectious diseases like we used to do. We now die of inflammation. Every single disease you can name to me right now is a disease of inflammation cancer, heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, so on and so forth. And it's all created by our diet and lifestyle, which means we can do something about it. Um, but you can't find an over-the-counter uh, remedy for uh, five locks inflammation, whereas NSAIDs or ibuprofen and that group of medications address COX-2 inflammation. 
uh, five lux inflammation is much trickier to address and you would have to get Celebrex or some sort of drug for that from your doctor. And by the way, 40,000 people die a year by taking ibuprofen and it's a, acetaminophen, which is our friend Tylenol, is the number one cause of acute liver failure in this country. And you don't need a lot of extra Tylenol to kill you, so beware. Um, if you have a partner or you're, you or yourself like to pop the ibuprofen, stop. It creates downstream inflammation in the gut, it weakens the kidneys, and you have a 50 to 60 increased risk, uh, increased risk of heart attack or stroke by using a daily dose of ibuprofen, which we think is safe because it's available for us to use. It is not safe. Anyway, 5 lux inflammation is, is, is not helpful to us um, for many reasons. As you can see, it comes from arachidonic acid. Um, on the, this side, the left side, the leukotrienes lead to inflammation that are asthma, um, COPD, emphysema, irritable bowel syndrome, joint pain, gout, psoriasis, brain tumors. These are all expressions of 5 lux inflammation. And then on the other side, it um, encourages a, a gene that uh, actually allows inflammation and forms cancer cells. So Boswellia inhibits that. So if you can inhibit 5 lux inflammation, you can inhibit all those things underneath. You're going to have pain-free joints, better breathing, predictable digestion, and cancer-free. And I have a story about it. I have a friend... Um, she was an attorney in Atlanta in her youth, and she's in her 70s now, and she had, in 1970s, she had breast cancer, and in those days, they used to radiate. And of course, they destroyed her lungs, because where are the lungs, but behind the breasts. And now she has uh, COPD, even though she's never smoked in her life. And um, I encourage her to get on the, the uh, Boswellia with some herbs in it that are really great for lungs, and she's doing so much better with that. I'm so thrilled about it. Um, so it is very powerful medication. So the key research findings with Boswellia um, were with pancreatic cancer. Uh, the ACBA acetyl keto 11 beta boswellic acids um, are, were associated with a 70% 70, 70 reduction in the tumor size. And when you're buying a Boswellia, again, turn the bottle around and look to see how much AKBIA, just call it ACBA, how much ACBA is in there. If there's no ACBA in there, it's not going to help you. In fact, it might make it worse because the BBAs in Boswellia make you more inflamed. So make sure you're looking for ACBA. Um, lung, improve, lung function improved by 70% of, in the patients that were treated with Boswellia. In colitis, again, remember, that's all 5 lux inflammation. 63% achieved uh, remission from colitis by just using the high ACBA Boswellia. And also Boswellia plus curcumin was as effective as Celebrex to relieve pain in the joint. So again, you want to look for Boswellia as extract that is less than 5% BBAs, beta Boswellic acids, and at least 10% ACBA, which is the most powerful compound found in the plant. There are no known adverse effects. Um, in fact, Boswellia is protective against tumor formation. Um, it's also really good for your brain in general. It's also used for joint uh, pain and arthritis, IBS, and anything in the gut, and as I said, the lung disorders. When we combine um, Boswellia, high ACBA, with curcumin, with the AR tumorone, and we put those together in a pain formula, we can address any kind of pain guaranteed. There is no pain that formula will not address. And the formula that combines that is the number one selling product in the USA in health food store, in the health food store channel, because it's so effective at reducing pain. And you probably know what products I might be talking about. It's in a yellow box, but it really, really works for all kinds of pain because it combines the 5 lux inhibitor and the COX-2 inhibitor all together in a great formula. Um, and again, the information in your pack about how you can, what, how, what to look for in Boswellia and how it can address your health issues um, better than drugs. So, um, two newer herbs that we know, are know, we know more about now and uh, we're really just touching the, the web really with the cannabis sativa. The cannabis sativa and echinacea angustifolia, I'm gonna, um, okay, we'll look at the endocannabinoid system. 
just a backstory. I had done pre preparation for this talk and they changed the slides on me, so I have to uh, just whistle amongst yourselves for a minute. <clears throat> Um, okay, so the endocannabinoid system, do you all, are you all aware of that? It was only really discovered in the last 20 years. So like you have all these body systems, you have your cardio system and your respiratory system and your immune system, you also have an endocannabinoid system. And I know if you've been to Dave's class, you probably know way more than I do about it. Um, but it plays a role in multiple uh, areas of your body and your health. And uh, there's high concentrations of endocannabinoids in the brain and throughout our body. So it plays a ro role in your mood and memory and your nerve function, appetite, your metabolism, inflammation, and your perception of pain. But luckily on the planet, we have um, compounds in plants which we call phytocannabinoids. So they're cannabinoids from plants that can flip the switches for the endocannabinoid set, uh, system. And when people talk about receptors, that's what they mean. It's like a little switch, it's like a, a receptor is a communication pathway that we have all throughout our body and um, you know people who have cancer and use marijuana to relieve pain have known about this for a long time and that's been you know the big discussion about why can't why isn't this available for us to use because it's it's an herbal the confusion comes though because um, hemp is a great source of phytocannabinoids and phytocannabinoids trigger these endocannabinoid receptors that I've been talking about it, talking about. And hemp is a really rich source of phytocannabinoids. And um, by the way, interestingly, they, we call it the can cannabinoid system just because when, when was that? In the 60s, they were researching why people got high when they smoked weed, when they smoked cannabis. And so it just so happened that what they discovered was this, these receptors and we called it cannabinoid. Um, that's where the name comes from, in case you're wondering. Um, so we can flip these switches, receptors for reduction in pain and decreased inflammation. And clinical trials that have been done on hemp focus on inflammatory and nerve pain. So people who suffer multiple cirrhosis, rheumatoid arthritis again, and new neuropathic pain, um, all have studies that can show um, that these plants um, are very effective to help. So, but hemp is not marijuana. So they come, both come from the can cannabis plant family and they're easily recognizable because hemp, industrial hemp is tall, like a tree with the leaves on the top and the marijuana plant is a low shrub-like uh, creature. Um, and marijuana contains high THC. Uh, the THC and the CBDs are found in the um, the stalk, the leaf and the flower, sorry, let me back that up. Marijuana contains high THC and will get you high. <laughs> the hemp plant contains low or no, hardly any THC, will not get you high, but has high levels of CBD. And there's a family of CBDs and other cannabinoids. So you get health benefits without the high of the marijuana if that's what you're interested in. Hemp seed, by the way, has no THC and no CBD. So you can use hemp seed oil, and I know a lot of people add that to their diet. There's no CBD in that, and there's no THC in that. Are there any questions on that? So why would you add in hemp oil that has no CBD? Because it's high in omega-3s. So some, like vegans, who don't want to use fish oil or uh, might add that to their their smoothies or whatever to get some um, good omegas for the brain. You know, DHA is really important for our brain. A third of our brain is made with DHA. Did you have a comment? I was just going to say that the uh, essential fats, like I said, the omega-3s, and even the hemp seed is rich in them, uh, also helps your own body's production of the endogenous, the one of the cannabinoids that our own body manufactures. It starts actually Right. And oil is very beneficial. It's been around for what, 25, 30 years? We've had hemp oil on the shelves in the National Food Stores. Right. But it didn't provide no THC. It still might influence any of the cannabinoid system, but we just didn't know it at that time. We didn't know that it was based on the material for production of our own stuff. 
Right, and there are really good quality brands of hemp oil that contain CBD that use the hemp seed as a carrier. Again, like we use the tumorones and the essential oils, the hemp seed oil is often used very healthily as the carrier for the product. So that's something really good to look out for. Um, so each phytocannabinoid has its own unique activity and we're only really scratching the surface. Um, the last information I heard, there is 120 cannabinoids found in the hemp product as far as we know so far, I'm sure. Um, there's gonna be more. <laughs> So what do we need to know about hemp oil? It's a very confusing subject right now. And um, I was just telling somebody that my friend in Brevard is a professor of criminology at Brevard College, but he also liaises with the police department in Brevard and it's just blowing their minds. They can't figure out who's using CBD and who's, who's using marijuana and it's really difficult to charge somebody and arrest somebody because they just don't know. It's kind of fun in a way. They can't test it in the field either. Right. Right, so it needs to be sorted out, and I'm sure at some point it will be. But legal hemp oil contains less than 0.3 THC. So make sure you get a, a reputable brand that you know um, is trustworthy on the label. Products that are hemp seed only don't contain CBD or any other beneficial cannabinoids. Um, there's no label claims for CBD. The FDA has ruled CBD a drug for now. Um, it's, it's very important to buy from that because you may be getting a product that has way more than 0.3% THC. And if your job de depends on you being clean or if you're on probation, that becomes a really big issue. So it is definitely buyer beware on the CBD oil and hemp. Ooh, now I need to go back, remember, because it was all topsy-turvy. Okay, this is one of my favorite um, plants that has superpowers and behaves better than drugs, echinacea. This is not echinacea for the immune system. So everybody knows echinacea, right? For colds and flu. This is a different echinacea. It's part of the family, but it's a different strain. So echinacea purpurea is the one for the immune. Angustifolia is the one that is really great for the brain. Echinacea for the brain. It has been proven effective for brain health. It contains plant chemicals, little superpowers, contain, can, called alchemides that bind to the cannabinoid receptors on the neurons, which are your brain cells. And it triggers feelings of calmness and relaxation. And in clinical trials, it was found to be comparable to prescription drugs for anxiety and also for um, difficult to treat anxiety or depression. Um, so some of the things it does when these receptors it attracts are um, GABA, serotonin, um, dopamine, these are all our feel-good hormones that we produce from the brain. And then also something called anandamide. Anandam, ananda means uh, bliss in Sanskrit. This is called the bliss molecule. And when people do get high, that's what they experience, that euphoria. Or there's a drug called ecstasy, that's what that is too. It's an anandamide um, boosting drug. Well, echinacea helps you sense your own anandamide, so you immediately feel calmer. Um, Key research, men and women with increased levels of anxiety were given 20 milligrams of the Echinacea angustifolia twice a day. There was a significant reduction, reduction in anxiety. Uh, it worked right away um, and also continued to result, get results with calmness and, and well, feelings of well-being two weeks after the treatment had stopped. So this is something that really did a good job right away and then continued to work even when, when the people had stopped using the, uh, the echinacea material. So that was interesting. No adverse effects, which is awesome because anybody who's used or is around people who use antidepressants know there are a myriad of side effects that are most unpleasant, that ruin relationships and um, you know, really affect people's personalities and their creativity. Um, how we use it for anxiety, it's 20 to 40 milligrams once or twice a day. There are no significant adverse effects. It's safe for kids and even for your dog. So if you have a dog that doesn't like thunderstorms, won't go in the car, yaps at every van that passes the house, this is gonna be so good because you're gonna give him one of these and he's gonna feel great. Um, I have a friend who uses it for their uh, small child because she has attention hyperactivity and it works great for her, it really just calms her down, right down. 
And I encourage you to try this. It's, it really works right away. It's also really great for sleep. If you go to bed and you're one of these people who tosses and turns because you're worried about all your problems and the day ahead and uh, things you've forgotten to email that day, it really uh, helps you go to sleep. It's a great product. Okay, so crocus. What do you know the crocus flower? It's a beautiful flower. Um, crocus is being used in um, the Middle East for 5,000 years. It's not yet been taken off the market because of side effects, <laughs> like a lot of drugs have. Um, it's a beautiful flower and it has these little yellow stamens that you can see on that flower there in the middle. Each flower has three of them. It's the world's most expensive spice. It's the, actually the world's most expensive raw botanical. And the reason is that each flower produces three threads. It takes, they're all, they have to be hand harvested, so somebody has to get the flower and pick out the stamen, the stigmas rather. It takes a thousand flowers to produce one ounce of saffron spice, which is why it's so expensive. And it's in the supermarket in little tiny vials, right, if you've ever cooked with it. And I always think, oh, I'm just going to use turmeric because I don't want to spend the 10 bucks for three pieces of saffron, but it's a different flavor. Um, and it's been used in dyes. You know, people you would make yellow clothing with it because it's a very persistent dye color. Uh, you definitely don't want to get it on your new white blouse. Um, but it's also a really a powerful medicine. And it's as effective as Prozac. Fluoxetine is the is the name, Prozac is the one most people are familiar with in the treatment of um, depression. Um, people who used it, we could reduce depression symptoms by 47% versus a placebo. Um, it modulates, which means it balances serotonin and reduces inflammation in the brain. And again, inflammation in the brain is a precursor not only to depression, but also other brain problems, uh, they had a uh, study where, you know, one of, the, one of the big issues right now is we have a lot of people taking their own lives, right? Um, committing suicide. Everybody is touched by this, I'm sure, and knows somebody who's inexplicably. And they had a group of brains that were donated to them by families of people who um, had taken their lives. And the researchers are still trying to find out what might be happening to people who feel that way and, and make that decision. And the one thing that they could find in common in these brains is that these brains had not produced new brain cells in the short-term period leading up to that person's uh, taking their lives. And so that might be a reason that the, new, the, the lack of new brain production and neuron production cause a tendency to commit suicide. Well, we also know that's a side effect of some of these high powerful medications. Um, so that's kind of news that we can maybe use and maybe someone's going to do more study on that. But we know that uh, the combination of saffron and curcumin produces more neuro neurons in the brain. And you're all producing them right now because you're listening to me and learning, so your brain's producing a new pathway for that information. But um, curcumin on, a, on its own and combined with saffron will help produce more neurogenesis in the brain. So if you want to keep a snappier brain, we were just talking about that, then curcumin with saffron would be a really good suggestion. Um, here's a study that was done 12 weeks with patients with depression and uh, the inter inter international depressive score. There was a significant reduction in symptoms, especially for people who had atypical depression, which is really hard to treat with drugs. There was a 43% reduction in symptoms over 12 weeks, which is very impressive. And um, over 30 million people in this country take medication for anxiety and depression, and 70% of those actually don't get proper results from it. And many people try to get back off it, and it's addictive. It has an incredible amount of side effects. So if we can help people with these powerful medications, um, that's really encouraging. Saffron and weight loss. Um, we've known about this for a while. In clinical studies, saffron extract reduced snacking and emotional eating. You know, people say, oh, I've had a terrible day. I know I shouldn't, but I've got to have that pint of ice cream or that glass of wine or three glasses of wine or whatever is your thing. Um, saffron was very effective because it worked on the level of the amygdala, which is the fight or flight part of the brain, um, to allow that person to have more self-control and not feel as anxious and not feel as desperate to 
get the sugar. And interestingly, when you have sugar, you produce a serotonin rush. It really does work that way, and it is addictive. People crave sugar because they want that good feeling that it gives them. Uh, but of course, it's not healthy. <laughs> Um, in a study of mildly overweight women, twice a day daily saffron use decreased snacking by 55% versus placebo. So everybody's going to be getting gym, new gym memberships in a month or so, and this might be a really good thing to add to that so that you can keep to your new low-calorie diet. Um, how do you use saffron? You're looking for a, a product that has 265 milligrams of the blend of saffron with curcumin, uh, that is a clinically proven dosage level, by the way. That's been tested. That's the correct dose um, daily. It has benefits for mood in two weeks or less with no significant adverse effects. And I have another story about this, uh, of its efficacy with a friend of mine that I just met since I moved to North Carolina. And she's a woman who's had a... She's lucky because she's a very wealthy woman and has a lot of money, but it's, she's not happy. And she uh, had a lot of trauma in her life and a, a, was an alcoholic at one time. And she was on a, a drug called Pristique, which is quite, it's an, it boosts neuropinephrine and it also boosts um, serotonin. And she didn't like taking it. It made her gain weight and she, didn't, she never felt great on it. But when she tried to come off it, the, the withdrawal symptoms were so severe, she said, I just wanted to die. That's what it made me feel like. I couldn't deal with the side effects. So I suggested that she tried some of these uh, foundational products, the Boswellia, the curcumin, um, the grapeseed extract, another herb that we have called andrographis, which I'm a big fan of, and then she added the saffron lift. Now for her, she needed two twice a day, but remember this woman had been on this drug for a long, long time. She is doing fabulous. She managed to, with, she talked to her doctor about it, she, which, and the doctor was, okay, try it. And uh, she weaned herself off of it. She's lost a lot of weight. She's just hired a personal trainer. She is in, she's a different human being. And uh, she's 60 years old and she's doing great. She's no longer on the drug. But these, some of these drugs create these terrible side effects, long-term addiction, difficulty of withdrawing. You know, and some of these drugs, you know, you think, well, I'll just do it for a while. But you're not addressing the underlying issues. So these products and these powerful plants will really help you address the underlying issues, whether it's inflammation, whether it's cell protection, whether it's um, cancer formations, whether it's mood support and depression, ongoing chronic pain, without having to resort to taking some damaging drugs that will downstream create other problems and um, side effects. That's it, folks. <laughs> So please, thank you. Please read the information. I am happy to answer any questions as much as I can. And I know that Dave uh, has all of these good combinations of herbs and the correct doses. And you just need to ask him um, where they might be in his store. <laughs>